annual turnage annual meeting. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay. My name is Rochelle Brown. I'm the executive director for the Northeastern North Carolina chapter, which is all 20 counties, um, basically in the east up until the Cape Fear area. Uh, but today we are here celebrating you and our good work right here in the Turnage chapter. So I'm very excited to be here and to celebrate all the great work that we have done this past year. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I just want to point out just a few highlights that are so important uh, as far when we look at our accomplishments that you have done this last year. So before we, uh, I introduce Larry to do the blessing, uh, I just wanna point out a few things here. We have deployed personnel to Texas, Oklahoma, Canada and South Carolina, right out of our backyard. We have refurbished 20 trailer shelters, which was a big feat for all of us who were involved in that. We have raised funds through the Change for Change program, thank you to our partnership with the Nash County uh, School System right here, and with that we got our children involved in the American Red Cross mission. We served over 356 military families through the Red Cross Heroes Care Network. Over 1,300 emergency services. We had access to over 25,000 emergency financial assistance in $25,000 worth of assistance. We strengthened our bridge, and this is the most important because it involves you and our relationship with the staff here at the Red Cross, but we have strengthened and we are continuing to bridge our relationship together through all lines of service within the Red Cross. And we've seen this drastically improve and we've seen success over the course of the last year. We are succeeding in uniting, uniting and strengthening our volunteer foundation, which truly makes up who the Red Cross is, again, which is why we're here. We have succeeded our goals, not met them, but succeeded our goals in the pillowcase project, again, once again, involving the children and the Red Cross mission and our partnership with Disney, and our uh, fire install uh, program to where we install smoke alarms into homes. And we have, again, not only succeeded our goal, but we have led and have been really proven to be a, a great mentor in our good work towards that. We can point to lives being saved because of that work. I could go on and on. For effect, I'm actually going to turn over this, our last highlight, um, when we look at our blood services to Kristen Sawyer, who's a district manager, uh, for, for the good work that they have done in the blood services. Good afternoon. I'm going to keep it very short, but I just wanted to give an update on blood services. Um, so we're very excited and proud uh, to say that we have surpassed our annual goal for this year in blood services for Eastern North Carolina and um, have made our goal every month, 11 out of 11 months. Now we are really trying, uh, to my knowledge, this has not been done in years, um, and we are really trying to finish June strong, so I urge any of you in this room that are eligible to come out and donate today or tomorrow in Eastern North Carolina, uh, we need to go over a little bit, but if we're not giving up until uh, tomorrow is over. But we have surpassed our annual goal, and despite um, changes within the organization, we are very impressed, um, have a very awesome team in Eastern North Carolina to support me and our mission. And we could not do what we do without you guys as volunteers, with blood donors and uh, blood drive sponsors and everybody who assists in the collections in Eastern North Carolina. So thank you very much and we're looking forward to starting another awesome year tomorrow. Okay, thank you.
part of bringing me on nine months ago. So I can't thank you enough, not only for, for bringing me on to the American Red Cross to work alongside of wonderful folks that do amazing work that we are celebrating today, uh, but thank you for your leadership and thank you for everything that you do for this community. You're a fantastic mentor and I, I just can't say thank you enough. So.
so again, I will, just, I will just say that for right now. So again, thank you to the board. We do appreciate it. Agenda, then the board chair report, and I've only just got a few items that I do want to highlight. Um, as we talked about a while ago, and again, and, and when I it's hard to talk about highlight again without I want to mention once again uh, Rochelle and everything that's been done this year, all the challenges, and how the team of the Red Cross has really come together to not only not drop anything, but even take things to another level. So I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that again. Congratulations uh, to the closing out for the change uh, for change program. Again, this was getting children involved in the mission of the Red Cross and to help raise funds uh, to support the good work that is being done. The money raised in that program was six thousand and thirteen dollars. <laughs> Rose Banquet, the annual program that was held out at Rose Hill, uh, actually netted the program amount. What they actually raised was twenty-nine thousand so, dollars. Anything else you can pick up as we go along. I also do want to recognize, uh, and I, we've got three board members that are going to be leaving, retiring from the board: Margaret Ann Wooten. Maria Lambert, and also Larry McGavin. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, for those who have been on the board know that uh, it, it's not one of those boards you just come on and you throw it leave. You know, it's a, a lot of people who stayed around for a long time and do a lot of work, and these are some great examples of that, so thank you. We also have some guests here uh, of the board, and forgive me if I mispronounce the last name, Alex Pollock. Is that correct? Bonsack. Bonsack, okay. <laughs> My spelling is way off. <laughs> okay, Richard Koss. Okay, thank you, Richard. And Ron Raper. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Appreciate it. And I know I can say we're, we'll, we'll try to keep, continue to encourage you on the way. All right. We do have the chair that will be coming on again, uh, Kenneth Hunter. And I'm going to turn this back over to Rochelle. We've got a message from Kenneth. Uh, but I will say that I uh, had the pleasure and opportunity of, of watching Kenneth being around Kenneth and through a number, not only through the Red Cross, but all, also through some chamber activities. And it's amazing uh, all the various programs that pop up that somehow Kenneth is involved in and being supportive of. So I think he is going to make a, a phenomenal chair. Sorry he is not with us today. And uh, anytime if you can, just uh, thank him and recognize him and do appreciate it. Before I turn this back over to Rochelle, have I missed anybody or anything? All right. Thank you so much, Rochelle. All right. Thank you so much for that, Larry. Um, as you've obviously heard, I think the point we um, unfortunately had an unexpected emergency with Kenneth's wife. want to support him as much as we can in prayer right now. He did uh, ask that I read a message uh, to you from him, so I'll go ahead and start that now. Thank you very much for being here today. I am terribly sorry I'm not able to make it due to a serious personal matter. I was looking forward to this opportunity to take part in honoring the individuals who make our local Red Cross what it is, our volunteers. There is no greater honor in this organization than to be a Red Cross volunteer. Your commitment, dedication, care, and resolve make it possible for your local Red Cross to provide critical and timely service to thousands of local residents every year. These individuals and families you assist and care for in their times of need or whom you prepare through education and outreach 
can be anyone. They are our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, and of course, many whom we only see or touch once in their life. No matter who they are, always know you were there for them when they needed you most. In the coming year, your board has a great deal of work to do in order to better support you as volunteers, to better support the Red Cross, and to better support those who will call on you for help in the future. The need knows, the need now knows off, the need knows how to get off to this season, and the best we can do as a board is to be inspired by and live up to your example as volunteers, overcoming our obstacles and rebuilding the identity and community support that this organization deserves. It is an honor to serve you as a member of your Frederick E. Turnage Chapter Board. We are closing in on a century of local service to Rocky Mount and the Twin Counties. We are working to respond not only to the challenges within this community, but also to the incredible change the Red Cross has undergone in the recent years. Your staff has changed a great deal. It has been a time of learning for all of us. There is much more work to be done, and I have full faith in all of you, in all of you volunteers, staff, and board that we will accomplish a great deal in the coming year. As an organization, we address the needs of our community and its residents through, through prevention, preparedness, and response. We need to share this message of principled action and the successes it enables with our fellow community members. The Red Cross has the potential to touch and impact the life of every simple resident in Rocky Mount and Twin Counties. Let our charge in the coming year, our 100th anniversary, be to help the rest of our broader community accept this truth and connect with our programs and help strengthen our capacity in which we serve. Sincerely, Kenneth Hunter. So again, keep him and his family in your prayers and we look forward to his passion and his leadership in, in uh, moving forward in 2017. I'm now going to pass the mic to Samia Honey. Okay, guys, let's get this party started. That's my <laughs> So I would like we're going to start with years of service recognition with Tammy and Wendy. Okay. Ladies, take it on. Can everybody hear me from over here? Yeah. Okay, I have been told you know I have a big mouth. Oh. No laughter. <laughs> So, the years of service pins are the pins that are awarded to our volunteer base based on the years of service. So, and it's done through the, the honor system. So, what we do is we recognize you for your first year of service, and then we move to five years of service, 10 years of service, 15 years of service. So, example, if you were here last year and you got your first year's pin, then you don't come up this year because we don't have a two-year pin. We have our next pin is five years. Okay? So, I'm going to call the, Wendy's going to call the, no, I'll call the years. And then Wendy's going to write your name down so we can help keep track of it, okay? So, for anybody that's in the room today, if, you, if this is your first year of volunteer service, if you'll come down and get your first year pin. volunteer service. Has anyone volunteered for five years with the American Red Cross? If you have, please come down and get your five years service team. your pen in a little if you'll come stand right here behind me, behind me. if you'll come stand right here we'll take one group shot when everybody's through please emily if you'll come by so as you get your pen if you'll stand right here we'll take a group picture how about that 
See, it'll make y'all stand up in front of everybody. Okay. He's going to get his hand. All right, so 10 years of volunteer service. 10 years of volunteer service. For those of you that have volunteered for 10 years, if you'll come down and get your pen. All right. All right, if you'll step back, thank you very much, Miss Sadie. All right, for 15 years of volunteer service, 15 years of volunteer service, you'll come down and get your pen. Okay, 20, 20 years of volunteer service. Okay, 25 years of volunteer service. Now let me explain at this point, there are people in this room that have done this for 20 and 25 years, but they got pins last year. So 30 years of volunteer service, 35 years of volunteer service, 40, we had some last year, 40 blood volunteers last year. Okay, and 45. Okay, is somebody higher than that? Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you because I know that all of you have been volunteering for us, and I know that there were several people in the room. Are you coming? Okay. Awesome. I think Miss Ellen had to do a little prompting there. Mr. Crompton Moses, do you how many, how many years have you volunteered for? Five years in the early 70s, less. Okay. 65. Wow. So we'll have to order him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Crompton Moses. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. And thank all of you as well. I miss you singing. Now we're going to do a photo. I miss doing it. So everybody look and say, of awards are the gold awards. These are 500 hours to 3,999 hours worth of service. So people who get these awards this year are Wanda Alford, Tara Boney, Sadie Daughtry, Roger Townley, Peter Gilliland, Linda Tilly, James, you want to go to for your? She's here. What? Let me see. Oh, okay. All of these are here. John Burunda. Yeah. Helen Austin. Emily Watson. Delphina Talley. And David Jones. Yeah. <laughs> 
terrify them all. That's why it takes so long. <laughs> And the, uh, um, the other one we have today is Arlene Calipus, and she has been doing blood, I think, for about 40 or 50 years as well. So um, some of you have a long ways to go, but those are the two we have. And then we have one more that as soon as we get him in our system, Carlton Mosley will also be getting the Lifetime Award. And as he said, it was around 1970 he started, so we know he has those hours. That's right. And let me give Carlton, let me give Carlton credit. Carlton is in Volunteer Connection, but he's not Carlton, he's Norman. <laughs> <laughs> so I, our apologies for that, we will get that ordered. But the names that I called out, guys, are blood volunteers. So they, had, they were the last to be brought into the Volunteer Connection system, and so it's taken us a while to get them in, but um, we have a lot of people that do a lot of special things for us all year long, and we just wanted everybody to be recognized for their efforts. So thank you. Your attention over here, please. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my other duties was to give and award the Administrative Support Volunteer of the Year. I'm super sad she is not here today. Her name is Margie LeMay, and she's out of our Wilson office. And I, want, I called her yesterday, and I told her the following things that I am so forever grateful for her service. She, when her and I first met, she jumped up, she got involved. I think she also even helps Stephen Latham with Blood and Wilson. I get very worried because I'm afraid they're gonna go away and go that direction. But she has, she takes care of that office with the rest of the folks that are there. I'm very lucky to have them all. So to everybody in the Wilson office and everyone that supports us there. But this year, she got the award. So thanks guys. <laughs> My name is Tammy and I am the volunteer services representative for your area. I'm the lady that you get emails from. I'm the lady that calls you and harasses you and asks you questions so that I can get them into volunteer connection. And I'm the lady that y'all are very patient with and you all help me do just that. I could not do my job without you. You are the reason I have a job, so thank you. The next recipient is the volunteer services uh, award of the year, the volunteer of the year. This individual um, really does so much of my job, it's really a shame for me to even say that in front of my regional exec down there at the other end of the table. Um, but she is my right arm, and I think I said that last year as well. Um, she catches a lot of the administrative part of the job I do in the computer, as well as some of the issues that come across the phone, come through emails. She is a godsend for me. She is strong in her administrative skills. She has great people skills. And you guys also receive calls and emails from her. Um, and her name is Arlene Hogue. If she goes on. Over 800 
local um, health department workers and police and uh, social workers in three counties about sheltering and feeding. So when we have to open the shelters, which we hope we don't, uh, they'll know how we work and we'll know how they work. So it's a nice community partnership there. So I would like to call Emily Watson. Uh, This individual that we're recognizing today is such an inspiration to me. 
with services to the armed forces, our responsibilities are very vast. We, we are there from the moment that service member raises their hand to swear into the military, all the way through their military career, into their veteran status, and even when they pass away. It's a very overwhelming opportunity for us to serve. This individual has taken that responsibility to the most pinnacle that I can even imagine. Day in and day out, this volunteer serves with our veterans and getting them off the street and into shelters and in long-term homes. I have two examples that I want to give. I received a uh, phone call early one morning of a veteran who was living in his truck for three weeks and he needed assistance to get to the VA so that the VA would be able to provide housing. When he came, I uh, provided him with this individual's name and said, if the VA is unable to help you today, I want you to call that number. After about eight hours of waiting at the VA and talking to them, they still weren't able to find them a home that evening. They called this individual and within 30 minutes had him in a shelter. Later that night, he got another phone call with a lead to a more long-term housing situation. The very next morning, he called me back, literally in tears, thanking the Red Cross for all that we have done. Just yesterday, a very similar situation where a husband and wife came in. The husband is a veteran, and you could see he was past his being able to cope with the, the homelessness that he had been in. He looked shamed of being asking for help. I contacted this individual saying that we were unable to really find him a place because they're a husband and wife and most of the shelters are all male only. And this individual was able to come through to find a housing for the next three days so that we could find a more permanent solution for this family. This is what you do day in and day out. And I'd like to recognize Johnny Veranda, if you wouldn't mind coming up to accept this award.
for overall leadership in just multiple areas, not one area. Um, this individual volunteers specifically in one area, but has to coordinate and collaborate with other areas as well. When I say areas, I mean service lines. Um, he will do office work if we need him to sit at the front desk. He will run errands and take things places. Um, he will answer the phone call and direct people for any kind of question that comes across. And for any of you that have ever done that, believe me, when you pick up a phone in a Red Cross office, you never know what's on the other end of the line. <laughs> you never know if someone's going to be crying. And, and usually when those happen, that SAV services to armed forces. Um, or if they're mad because they've gone to a blood drive and it's not there because it's not that day. It was the day, the day before or the day ahead. But they're still not happy because they're there and the blood drive's not there. <laughs> or if somebody wants us to pay utilities generally pay utility bills. Um, you never know what the question, what the need is going to be on the other end. So it takes a very well-rounded person to be able to direct those calls, answer those calls, get them where they need to go so that they can get an answer, so that it, at the end of the day, that person on the other end of the phone feels like Red Cross did help them. This person has um, deployed this past year to three different areas for three different disasters and his leadership skills have been impeccable. Um, his ability to pick up any task and do whatever asked and do with a positive attitude has been very well noticed by many. He went to Louisiana for the floods, he went to Canada for the wildfires, and he went to South Carolina for the floods. He is a DAT captain for the Turnage area and he is also a lead caseworker for the Turnage area. My workings with this gentleman have, have shown his patience, his generous spirit, his kind heart. He would like me to tell you that, though. Um, and his willingness to help out whenever needed. So um, at this point, before I call his name, I'm going to give it to Rochelle and let her do that for you. She might have something else to say. But he is an honor to work with. He's a blessing to work with. And I always enjoy each encounter. With this individual, um, I just am so humbled by the dedication to not only this organization, mm -hmm. but as a person to do what is what is just genuinely good. Um, I'm all, I'm fascinated by all the hard work that you put in as volunteers, but to take it to a level. And what he has done and I have witnessed has been very humbling. I, I did him to everything that she said. And it, it's just, it, it's very hard to keep it together when you see day in and day out the, uh, the respect that he gains just from, from doing the good work of the Red Cross. And that person is David Jones. Coming on to the American Red Cross 
across from a board member of six and a half years to a, uh, a part of the team internally, I thought I knew quite a bit about the organization. I had no idea what I still needed to learn. It has been a tremendous amount of information. It has been a transition for all involved, but I could not have done it without this person. This person, I, the only way to describe her is a light. A light, not only of information, but of spirit. Uh, if there was, it did not matter what the day was or what challenges were ahead of us. She continued to stay grounded and to stay helpful, to stay very friendly and always just that person that I could go to. I cannot do any, anything in, within the Red Cross thus far without acknowledging that I'm here because of her. This transition has been wonderful because of her. So I would like to publicly say thank you to Son Sonia Honey.
Uh, lastly, I just would like to say thank you again for such a wonderful experience to work alongside of you. The reason the Red Cross exists for almost a hundred years. I'm looking forward to celebrating this amazing milestone along with you, picking up our momentum and doing what the Red Cross does best. There is no other organization out there that provides community, compassion, and care like you do. I am so humbled to work alongside of you and thank you so much. I would like to turn it over for our closing remarks to our fearless leader, our regional CEO, Barry Porter. from getting your car towed, so that's good news. But uh, just to close, uh, Rochelle said it's the 100th anniversary. Across North Carolina, about 55 Red Cross chapters stood up in 1917. That was because of the Great War. And it started because men in, went to war and women went to work to support them as they traveled across the ocean and into that uh, Great War. Remember they called it the Great War because it wasn't called World War I because we didn't know we would have World War II. But the Red Cross did tremendous work. I can tell you that over 300 Red Cross workers uh, lost their lives in the service uh, to, the, to the men and women uh, in the war zone. Uh, one of the fun facts to know though is that Walt Disney was actually a Red Cross ambulance driver in World War I. And so that's part of why we still have a good relationship with Disney. So look that up. Actually, on the side of his uh, ambulance, guess what he had drawn? Not Mickey yet, but he was drawing caricatures on the canvas side of his ambulance. So what a legacy we have to celebrate in the Turnage chapter in the Rocky Mount area across North Carolina. And I can't wait to see what we've accomplished together, what you've done to serve your community and carry that legacy forward when we gather next year and conclude the year with your 100th anniversary. Thank you very much for your coming.